Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'll get started here in about three minutes. We'll get started right at two o'clock. Um, just waiting on all the attendees to start logging in and getting settled. Um, but again, we'll just start here around two, so just bear with us um, and we'll be getting started here soon. Thanks. I'm going to give it another minute or so and I do see that we're still getting some attendees logging in here. So just hang on there for a few, a few more minutes. We'll get started uh, again right around two o'clock. All right, well, hello everyone. Um, I hope you are all doing well this afternoon. My name is Kelly Spainauer and I'm a senior admissions counselor here in the Office of Admissions. We hope you guys have been adjusting well to all the changes, of course, that everyone has had to make over the past month or so. Um, in our office at UNCW, we have had to cancel all on-campus events out of the abundance of caution, um, but we did just wanna offer you an opportunity to still be able to learn about the different programs that we offer our students here at UNCW. Uh, so for this webinar, um, we do have our Colleges of Arts and Science here to share with us an overview of the programs in that department. Um, so at this time, I will turn it over to her so she can introduce herself, um, and then I will go over some housekeeping items. Hello, everyone. My name is Maggie Bannon. I am the Academic Services Assistant Director in the College of Arts and Sciences. Awesome. Uh, so happy that she's able to join us today. Um, we just wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Um, just before we got started, we first wanted to let you know that you were automatically muted. Um, we, you know, as participants, we just don't want to get any feedback or background noise during the presentation. Um, but we do know that you'll probably have questions during the presentation. So we do offer you a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. This will allow you to type out your questions. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to write those. Um, but I will facilitate those questions to her at the end of the presentation. Um, if you would rather verbally ask those questions, um, I can also unmute your microphone um, to where you can ask those verbally. Um, all you'll need to do is just click the raise your hand button um, and then I can unmute you. So those are just a couple of things. Definitely keep that in mind. Try to use the Q&A button rather than the chat button. It just makes things a little bit easier for us. Um, but without further ado, I will uh, turn it over um, and let her begin the presentation for us. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say I'm really excited to have the opportunity to speak with students and families like yourselves about the great opportunities we have here at UNCW. So where I'd rather speak with you all face to face, this works too. So um, the College of Arts and Sciences, this gives you just kind of a quick glance. These are 
um, an overview of most of our College of Arts and Science programs. Okay, the mission of the college is at the center of everything that we do here. So um, preparing individuals for meaningful and ethical civic engagement in a globalized society, strong foundation in knowledge and skills necessary to flourish in our professional and personal endeavors. And we create, disseminate knowledge and expression in the arts, humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences to enrich the world and address the concerns of our community and beyond. So those are things that we are always thinking about and they're always at the forefront when we're making decisions. So the College of Arts and Sciences is the largest and most diverse college on campus. So we think of ourselves kind of into four different discipline groups. And I'm gonna go through and let you see the different majors that are in each of these groups. And for each area, I've tried to highlight some different things just to give you kind of a flavor of um, CAS. So the arts, um, you'll see listed here the degrees that we have in our arts. And to let you know that the art, art history, digital arts, music and theater programs are all located in our cultural arts building. To give you an idea of um, things that are available for our students, for the art programs, the building includes art galleries, art studios, a graphic design computer lab, a printmaking studio, and both digital and um, your typical darkroom studios. So then for the music programs, it includes rehearsal rooms, a recital hall, teaching studios, practice rooms, piano and computer labs, and a digital recording suite. For the theater programs, it includes two dynamic theaters, fully equipped costume and scene shops, a computer lab, and studio spaces. Then our creative writing program is housed in Keenan Hall. And one of the exciting things about it is in it, we have a publishing laboratory that they do publish works and students that are interested in a career in book or journal publishing could have the opportunity to get a publishing certificate here and work in that industry even before they get their degree. So then the last one here is our film studies degree and they are found in King Hall. And students in this program have access to lots and lots of amazing film equipment, an edit lab, a sound booth and a black box studio. So then moving on to the humanities. Um, students in the humanities go into many career fields that some might not expect. I used to work with first year students all the time and I would hear, I love insert major here, but I don't know what I can do with this degree. And that's when I had the opportunity to open their minds to the skills they can gain from their degree and the careers they can pursue. I encourage students to find their passion and then figure out what career opportunities it can offer them. I think a lot of times we do the first and then figure out what, um, or we think about a career and then we figure out the major. So. Find what you're passionate about, things that your strengths, and go from there. So some of our recent humanities graduates are found in many industries across the globe, including technology, sales, business, nonprofits, law, healthcare, travel, media, education, public relations, and government agencies, which could include the FBI, Federal Reserve, and foreign relations as some examples. The sciences are our largest discipline group. And you will notice here that several of these degrees will have both listed a Bachelor of Arts option and a Bachelor of Science option. And when you see that, um, basically a Bachelor of Arts degree offers a breadth of knowledge about a subject and it has more flexibility in course selection. So when you're looking for biology elective. Um, and then a Bachelor of Science degree, it's more tightly focused on the subject matter and will require more credit hours. So when both are offered, students should discuss their career plans with their advisor, so that can help determine the best degree to pursue based on your interests. So here's round two of our sciences. So students in our science majors have access to many exceptional indoor and outdoor laboratories. Indoor labs on campus include one of the few on the East Coast equipped for marine mammal investigation, including whale necropsies. We also have labs to study nuclear 
magnetic resonance, mass spectrometry, geospatial technology, remote sensing, and cartography. Then on campus, we have outdoor lab space, including a greenhouse, a garden, and a wildflower preserve. Off campus, we have the Center for Marine Sciences, which I'll talk about towards the end, a nature preserve, an ecosystem reserve, and a tidal shellfish research area. So you see our students are in lots of different areas. And then the last discipline group is our social sciences. And so kind of want to highlight some of the applied learning opportunities. So looking at, if you're thinking about doing communication studies, some of the things they have an opportunity to do, we have our own television station here on campus that they're involved in. They also have a creative magazine that students can, um, they work to help publish that. Then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, something that I think is really exciting is that we have what's called Peer 601 Creative. And this is a student run integrative marketing communication and create creative services firm. And what happens is we actually have external or off campus clients that contact the directors for this um, program and they hire the, um, this program to do things like create websites for them, um, public service announcements, videos, or come up with marketing plans. So our students, again, are getting some real life experiences. Then another fun area there is the performance studies. And so students in this program will create um, skits and they will actually go out into the schools in the New Hanover County District and perform for those students. Then highlighting another area here, psychology students. They have the opportunity to work in applied settings across the Wilmington area through either the supervised counseling practicum or the applied behavior analysis practicum. So depending on an area of interest, those are two um, ways they can go. They're also encouraged to search out active research opportunities with their faculty. So then something that um, get, can get confusing, so I wanted to clear this up. Um, so we do have degrees that have what we, we consider a teacher licensure option. So if you wanted to teach in the secondary or nine through 12 grades, you would major in one of these subject areas listed here. And then you would apply to the Watson School of Education for the licensure and education programs. So there are certain requirements that you have to meet and certain um, exams that you would have to take to keep progressing along. But those are all the um, subject areas for the 9 through 12 listed there. And then we also have the K through 12 programs in French, music, and Spanish. Um, so a lot of students think if they're doing education, they should start in Watson, but just to let you know that. Okay, and then here you'll see listed um, our minors. And we have a lot of minors, some of them will are subject specific, like our chemistry minor, but a lot of our minors are interdisciplinary, meaning that you're going to take courses from many different areas, subject areas on campus. Those might all be in the College of Arts and Sciences, or there may be courses that you would take within the other colleges as well. And you will see that um, we just had two minors um, that were just decided on by the faculty. And that's our coastal environmental writing and marine biology. So those are not available right now, but they will be starting in the fall semester. So um, I love that when students are like, what can I minor in? I'm like, what could you not minor in? So keeping that in mind. All right, so now it's my time I get to brag on faculty and students. So these are just a few examples of um, some of the accolades our faculty have gotten. And you'll see on these next slides that I'm highlighting the subject areas. And I do that so that students can think about areas of study that you're potentially interested in and just kind of see about what are some um, things that you could get involved in. So the first two examples there, they were research. And you'll see that students are involved in um, both of these options. So we had undergraduate students that went on an Arctic expedition. So just like our faculty do amazing things, so do our students. Um, 
quickly, you see that two film studies students, they won daytime Emmys last year for their work on the Ellen DeGeneres show was one and the other was Valerie's Home Cooking. Um, and then we had our UNCW cyber defense team. Um, they were one of six schools to qualify as finalists. So we know that, you know, cyber defense is a big area of interest now. So that's exciting. And then um, anytime a student can get a, a fellowship or grants um, to help with that kind of stuff as the our international study student did is great. And then um, we had three history students awarded um, a scholarship so that they were able to travel internationally and conduct faculty mentored research in those areas. Okay, so then talking about applied learning. Um, this is something that you have, if you've looked at some of our marketing materials, you hear a lot because it's something that we are extremely passionate about. Um, you'll see that picture up at the top there. Yes, that is a very large whale that is deceased. And um, we have what's called a marine mammal stranding project. And so students can get involved in that even starting your freshman year um, and learn more about these areas. And maybe if it's, a, if it's not deceased, if it's an animal that's still alive, they may be able to help um, get a dolphin back out safely. So that's one of the interesting things there. So our applied learning, um, I think that our former dean said it best. And his quote was, applied learning is not just a tagline on the website, but it is in our DNA and makes us who we are as an institution. So I wanna give you an idea about these activities by highlighting some opportunities our students have had in each one of these. So um, my office is the one that, um, my boss, the assistant dean or associate dean, he approves research projects that we call these independent studies. Um, so I see some of these titles and I see the explanation of what these students are gonna do and I am just amazed. Um, so you'll see here, there's lots of different areas. Um, you know, research is not just in the sciences and social sciences. It can happen in art, in English, history, um, so I'm going to be quiet just for a second for you all to be able to glance over some of those to get an idea. Okay, so another area we have is internships. So these students get approved internships. So before they are um, accepted, students have to have clear learning outcomes and they have to have people at the internship site that are willing to supervise them. And so uh, here I wanted to highlight some of our examples that are not local. We have lots of local opportunities, um, but I think it's kind of neat to see where students go elsewhere too. Okay, so students also have service learning opportunities. So whereas community service is often a very short term, um, you may go one day and help um, fill boxes of food for food pantries. Service learning opportunities are things that are often going on longer and the students are learning as they go and they're processing what they're learning. Um, so we have a lot of really great examples here of learning opportunity agencies within our local area. So and again, these focus on lots of different areas. Okay, and then the last one here are study abroad opportunities. And, and hopefully when um, things get a lot safer, we'll be able to start these back up. But, there are lots of different study abroad opportunities. Um, students can do what we call an exchange, um, where you pay UNCW tuition and go elsewhere. Um, we have the regular study abroad, and then we have some that are faculty led. And so these may be short terms um, in the summer or spring break. So here I've highlighted some of the ones that we've had um, before.
And if you'll see that the Russian literature, drama and translation, you see that that's actually two different departments. Um, so theater and world languages and cultures focusing on the Russian language. So again, departments may work together as well. And you are working with CAS or faculty, so you're getting to know them a lot better. And so for those of you that might be a little nervous about studying abroad, if you've already met with the faculty several times and the other students in that program. So you're not going by yourself. So that's an opportunity that some students really like to do. Okay, so before I wrap up with the information part, um, I wanted to kind of highlight two of our other programs here. So the Center for Marine Science is an off-site location. It's about 15, 20 minutes, depending on traffic from our main campus, and it is beautiful, gorgeous. So we try to give you a little aerial view there, but lots of things happen there. There are three different areas there. So it is a research facility that has labs for local and visiting scientists and student researchers. Um, so some people will actually pay to rent space there so that they can do their research. It provides local, state, national, and international research, as well as educational opportunities for students. So both our undergrad and graduate students can be found out there. Another great thing is it provides outreach programs for our um, community, and they have some really cool summer programs um, for students through that too. And then um, on the sciences slide, you might have seen one of our newer um, degrees. We actually now have a coastal engineering degree. So students that are interested in that aspect of engineering would stay at UNCW. But there are students that may be interested in other areas of engineering like me mechanical, aeronautical, things like that. And for those students, they can begin. Um, this is a joint effort between UNCW and NC State. So it's kind of um, an economical way to start the NC State engineering curriculum. So you start here, you're here for two years. And while you're taking courses that count towards both universities' general education um, re requirements, you also take some select NC State engineering courses through live video conferencing. And while you're in that course, there is actually a faculty member here at UNCW in the course with you as well to help um, answer questions. So that is a very big, broad overview um, of our program. Um, because it is so large. So I wanted to give you more time to ask any kind of questions or concerns that you may have. Awesome. All right. Well, at this time, uh, attendees, you do have the opportunity to write your questions down in the Q&A box. Um, again, you can use the raise your hand option as well, and I can unmute you if you want to do that as well. So I'll just give you all a few minutes to do that, um, and then we'll get started with questions. Thank you guys so much. I know it's a lot of information, but yeah. um, if there's any questions, definitely feel free to ask. I'll go back to the, um, while you're thinking about, I'm going to go back to our programs. I don't want to, I'm trying to go slow so I don't make anybody dizzy. <laughs> um, so you'll also see on the arts that there, most of the degrees are Bachelor of Arts, but creative writing, there is a Bachelor of Fine Arts. And music, like the sciences, actually has two different areas. So there's the music education degree, which a bachelor, is a Bachelor of Music and um, a Bachelor of Arts. And you see a student in a film. You see our digital arts in action. And this was actually a play they did a couple years ago. And I always like this because most of us know Beauty and the Beast. Um, so it's amazing the talent we see from our art students. Any questions, Kelly? Not so far. So you must have done a good right. job. I was about to say, you must have done a good job with all questions. <laughs> trying to think. Um, another, some of our, um, some of our degrees that a lot of students may end up doing a double degree or a degree and a minor. At UNCW, minors are not required, but I tell students to think about what their end goal is, you know, what kind of career they want to go into and talk with your advisors because they may suggest um, a double major or a minor that you've never thought of, 
Or on the other hand, some students have so many interest areas and they say, oh, I want to ma major in X, X, and X. And then sometimes it gets too overwhelming. And I heard a faculty say this once and it really hit me. Instead of worrying about doing double, triple majors, if you can get involved in that applied learning that I kind of highlighted there, that is the most important part. You know, employers are looking for amazing grades, but they're also wanting you to be active and that could be in the school and in the um, community. And then for you to be able to get out and doing internships or research opportunities, um, whichever is appropriate, that helps strengthen um, your opportunities for later, either making you more attractive for grad programs or making you attractive to go right out into the workforce. So there was a question that did come up. Um, I'm not sure if you might be able to answer this or not, um, but it did say, um, they asked if you were able to sit in on a specific class during maybe a campus visit. Uh, I think that that it would definitely have to be arranged beforehand. I know that um, admissions programs when they have tours that um, like the Saturday tours that they would have um, some mock classrooms. Um, but as far as if you wanted to sit in on that would probably we'd have to ask permission. A lot of times students will meet with faculty. Um, again, you'd want to talk to your admissions counselor for them to arrange that. Yeah, definitely what she said. We, we try our best to try to at least arrange a time for you to meet with the professors, but uh, the specific classrooms can be a bit tricky because they do have a schedule to follow and sometimes our tours don't meet that same schedule. Um, so it just, it just has to be kind of a case by case basis on that one. Mm -hmm. Um, currently still no other questions. I will definitely want to give it a few more minutes. Um, yeah. yeah, just to make sure that I know this is, you know, uh, you may not be thinking about this yet. Maybe you haven't, maybe you've decided to come in as undeclared, which is still gr a great option. Um, but this was just a great way for you to just kind of get some more information about the programs that we offer to our students. So on this page, I can highlight. So you see um, these students here with Beehive. So we, we have a, um, can't remember what the official name of the group is, but basically we have a bee, I think beekeepers, and they actually have produced honey and they sell it in some of our stores on campus. So again, being kind to the environment. And then you see um, students with a faculty member doing research and um, that picture may be too small for you to see on your computers. I didn't think about that. Usually I'm in this um, big theater, but those are turtles there. So let's see on this one. Um, the picture here of these two gentlemen is um, at one of the sites at Wrightsville Beach. And so they were weighing some of the fish that they were helping to grow there. And this is one of our lovely with anthropology looking at bone structure and fossils. So we did get another question. Um, this one is kind of more of an advising question, um, but she uh, did ask how you would go about declaring a minor. Um, okay. And you can answer this if you'd like, um, or, or I can it either way. Yep, yep. So, um, so if you are a first year as an, a freshman student, you will not declare your major until the, at the end of um, your first year. So you will start out either in university college or honors college. And we do that so that you can explore options and you have an advisor there to help you, not just with picking courses, but we wanna make sure that you're getting um, the best bang for your buck, as I like to think about it, that you're getting involved in areas, you're aware of resources, um, things like that and focusing then on what you think you want to major in and then um, after that first year if you're ready you can declare your major and so you can declare a minor at the time you declare your major or you can declare a minor later on so there is a computer system where you would declare your major or minor and or change it um, if you are a transfer student and you know that if you have a major declared and you want to add a minor um, you can contact admissions to have that added before um, you attend a transfer orientation or you can wait till later. So there's not a, you have to do it right away. I've even had students realize that I am two courses from a minor and I still need um, 
four courses to in order to have the 120 hours needed to graduate. So I think that I'm going to do this minor and then they declare it maybe their last semester. So there's not like a time limit. Yes, good question though. Um, I think yes. that's it right now. Um, if there's not any other questions, do, do you want to uh, have any closing statements or anything before we close this out? So I guess let me go back to the last screen. Oh, whoops. I don't know what happened. Okay, um, my share screen just disappeared. Let's Ooh. see if we can get that back up there. Oh, I don't know what happened. Um, but if you have any emails that or any questions that you want to direct me specifically, you can see my email up there. And so it's bannonm at uncw.edu. I love helping students um, get acclimated and get questions answered. So do not hesitate to reach out to me. And I just appreciate this opportunity you all have given me to talk to you all. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we look forward to seeing you in our next webinar. Um, if you guys have any other questions, um, definitely go to the admissions page or specifically to our um, different uh, professors. They'd be happy to answer any questions. Just be sure to try and do email just because there's not a lot of access to phones right now, but uh, we hope to be up and running soon. Um, okay, and we've got one more question. Oh, Sorry, good. I didn't want you to... Um, so Alex asked if interest in pre-professional programs, that's a great question I didn't highlight. So, um, so with pre-professional programs, again, if you're a first year student, you would work with your advisor and we have a pro professional programs um, advisors there. And then if you're in a major, you'd want to let your faculty know because um, things like graduate school or law school, there may, um, there are going to be specific courses that you have to take, but there are not specific majors that you have to be to um, complete those. And there are outside the classroom things that you're going to want to complete to make you again more attractive to those programs. So that would be something to definitely talk about with your advisor. Wonderful. Sorry. All right. Well, I think that closes us out. Um, oh, hold on. I think we got another one. Yeah. Oh, that is it. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. And again, we look forward to seeing you in our next webinar. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Thank you all.